All right. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome. Good afternoon. To... Good. You are welcome to another session of our Israel virtual seminars. And in fact, uh, this particular virtual seminar is to commemorate, make aware about the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. That is the essence of this particular virtual seminar. We are using the day, which is a day always set aside for, for International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Trafficking. And we have an interesting topic that we are going to discuss, which is keeping in tune with new ways of substance abuse, parental strategies to deal with it. Cater to what we knew was uh, marijuana and causing problems for us as parents. But trust me, uh, the youth of today, young men and young women of today are using very ingenious ways of getting themselves into drug abuse with all its complications. And you are exposed to one of them and you shock that really is this what is happening. And I'm pretty sure that most of us parents are not aware about these ingenious ways that young men and women are using. So we are going to use this particular uh, seminar to expose these ways to ourselves here today. So the, the, the global theme for the commemoration is the evidence is clear, invest in prevention. The theme, the evidence is clear, invest in prevention. So as parents, uh, foremost mental health authority would have to promote this knowledge using the platform, using the resources, engaging in all the facilitators that we have to promote this knowledge so that is the investment we are making in the prevention so that will prevent our youth from foremost not even getting, getting there, not abusing drugs. And you, our participants here too, are investing your time and resource to come and listen. So yes, the evidence is there and we are investing in the prevention. The aim of this year's campaign is to raise awareness about the importance of treating people who use drugs with respect and empathy providing evidence-based approach that prioritizes prevention and treatment, voluntary services for all, offering alternative to punishment, prioritizing prevention and leading with compassion. Prioritizing prevention, because if it doesn't happen, we are all safe. If it happens, then the complications comes in. So uh, it looks like today, uh, for a few, our housekeeping rules are in order, but let me again remind all of us, uh, just mute yourself. If unfortunately the system does not mute you, uh, during question time, raise your hand and you'll be called, you unmute yourself, then you make your submission. As usual, we are discussing mental health issues. And for that matter, when we get the opportunity to talk, to make our submission, we should be sensitive. And uh, our helpline is 0800-678-678. So this is by way of the housekeeping rules. In fact, we have some very key objectives that we need to achieve by the end of this seminar. We need to achieve them which includes letting parents know the risk factors and these new ways in which our young men and women are using drugs, the importance of early intervention and seeking for professional help when dealing with substance abuse issues, promoting parental involvement in monitoring their children activities to prevent and address substance abuse, to provide parents with effective communication strategies to discuss substance abuse with their children openly and honestly. We'll try and get a few tips to, to deal with that. Then finally, to empower parents, participants with tools and resources to create a supportive and nurturing environment at home. That 
reduces the likelihood of substance abuse. So these are key objectives that we seek to achieve today. Uh, I'm hoping that by the end of the seminar, we should be able to significantly achieve these objectives based on your questions and submissions. And as usual, we've put together experts who, who know their stuff in academia and in research and in practice. We have a young man of lived experience who will also share his experience so that we get real life experience to know that what we are discussing uh, is not abstract, but it's a reality among us. So to do that, my facilitators are, he's, he's every time we discuss this topic here, he is always more than happy to join us, so much willing to help us. He's the person of Dr. Eugene Dodoy. He's a consultant psychiatrist, head of department at the Psychological Medicine and Mental Health at the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Dr. Dodoy, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to be here again. Yes, Love. yes. Yes, you, you are looking, but for your bad head, you are looking fresh, too young for me. You are looking hey. too young for me. <laughs> I, like that. It means I, I can go back to the market. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only you'll be allowed. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, next is Mrs. Bridget Amwakun Atta. She is a clinical psychologist at the Pantan Hospital. She is interested in providing services for optimal mental health of individuals, families, corporate organizations, and the public. Uh, Bridget, say hello to our good participants. Hello, where are you? I'm here. Uh, hello, everybody. Push on your camera and uh, let them see you. Then you can move. Hello right. there. Hi. Good. How have you been today? Very well. Good. Hope you've good, been fine too. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. I All am. Right. So for the network, you might decide to switch on your camera or off it when the network creates a problem. All right. Okay. Next, we have Miss Juliana Amankwa Mafu. She is a principal regulatory officer at the F Food and Drugs Authority. She's a chemist by profession from the University of Cape Coast. She holds a master's degree in public health from the University of Ghana. She is also a public health expert in the regulatory field at the Food and Drugs Authority with over 15 years experience in controlled substances regulation, which includes narcotics, psychotropics, precursor chemicals, these are the three UN drugs convention, as well as tobacco and tobacco products regulations. She is currently the head of Document Control and Estimates Unit at the Food and Drugs Authority, Ghana. She has served as a resource person all over the place. So you can tell that she knows her top when it comes to the groundwork, what the young men and young women are doing, and expert in advocacy as well. Hi, Julie. Switch on, unmute yourself and switch on your, mic, uh, your video and say hello to our participants. Hello? Juliana? She's, she's on too. Well, we'll come back to her. We'll come back to her. Um, and finally, we have Mr. John. Asogonde, Mr. John Asogonde. He's a person with lived experience 
when it comes to drug abuse. Gone through that experience and very well so much so that at this point in time, he is a writer, an entrepreneur, with a strong commitment to making positive impact in the lives of others, including the youth. As a visionary leader behind the first Accra non-alcoholic bar, known as the Eden Bar, he has demonstrated his dedication to creating safe spaces for young people to socialize without the pressures of alcohol and its social vices. As a writer, he is the author of the award-winning book, Breaking Up with Mary Jane, a book chronicling his past addiction to marijuana. Through his writing, he shares his personal experiences and journey of transformation, providing hope and inspiration to others facing similar challenges. Quite recently, that is uh, May 19th, he released his latest book, Unchained. The book launch, which was held at Eden Bar, symbolizes John's full recovery and commitment to creating a safe space for others. These are my facilitators for today. So you can tell the good mix that we have. Juliana, are you back on? Well, when she when she gets back on, we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch. We'll let her hear her. Okay, so my dear participants, we are ready to roll. Let's know what this topic is all about. John, I would like to start with you. John, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon. Good. I would like to start with you. How did you get into how did you get into drug abuse? How did it start that your parents did not even notice it? That it almost spoiled, it almost marred your life. How did it start? Um, well, thank you for having me here. But you know, drug abuse, I think, as many other people, it always starts very casually. Um when it started, I never imagined that. I would even get to a point where I'll be addicted. It started um, quite innocently with alcohol when I was still in secondary school. But we're just drinking once in a while, occasionally, when we go for parties or we go for events. Then from cigarettes, we started smoking. Um, I mean, from alcohol, we started smoking cigarettes. Again, this was just something we're doing casually at parties and at events. And then when I went into the university, um, I met some friends that were smoking marijuana in my hostel. So um, I was curious. I was young and curious, and I wanted to try it for myself because prior to that, everything I heard about marijuana was that if you smoke marijuana, you go mad. But I came to school and I saw my mates smoking, and they weren't, you know, mad. So. Um, as as curious as I was, I wanted to try it and see what they were, it was all about. But, you know, I had laid the foundation for habits like that because I started drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes in high school. And so at the university, I was, I was completely ready to try, you know, this new substance. And marijuana in the beginning seemed very cool. It made me, it, it gave me um, appetite. So I was able to eat more. You know, it made me relax. Um, it gave me some sort of confidence that I thought was cool. And so before I knew it, I was addicted. I didn't even know how it came, but I woke up one and I realized that I was smoking every single day. Like, it, I just couldn't live without it anymore. So when I wake up in the morning, I had to smoke. Before I eat, I have to smoke. Everything I do, I had to smoke. And so that is how it started. So more or less, like, it gave you the wrong impression that life was good. That's what yes. it does. It takes away, it takes away all the troubles in life, and it, you think that that is the it. wrong impression that it, it does, isn't it? That's the wrong impression. Yeah, that's the wrong impression. Okay, thank you very much. Let me ask Doctor Dodo the scientific processes that went on till you lost control of everything. Till you lost control of everything, Doctor Dodo, are you there? 
Unmute yourself, the third way. Sure, I'm on mute. Good, good. So, so scientifically, what happened to John? In <laughs> that, he lost control. <laughs> yeah, and um, John seemed to, I might say, have a, a classical way that this condition happens. And that is what we have always been worried about. That addiction is a disease of young people. And we should be interested when our young people, I mean, their mental health. So basically what was happening to him was that the brain became used to when we say used to it, meaning that if you don't use the drug, there's some kind of discomfort that would propel you to continue to use it. And I will explain how that also happens very briefly. So there, there are two theories for why young people get addiction. So the first theory is that the frontal part of our brain, of our brain, the front part here, all right, is called the frontal lobe, where we have what we call executive functioning. So that is where we can reason from. That is where we plan from. That is where we basically think from. That's okay. If I manage to do A, B, C, in five years' time, in six months' time, I mean, so that planning that we all do for life is done from this frontal part of the brain. Unfortunately, it's the last part of the brain to be fully developed. That part is, I mean, it's fully developed at the age of 24, 25. So when young people who haven't attained that age start using drugs, what we believe happens is that they continue to damage the development. So they may not fully mature their frontal lobe, even though they are growing in age. And that impairs their judgment that, no, I'm using this drug. It's making me drop out of school. Using this drug is affecting my life. Using this drug is making me unemployed. That decision that should come from the frontal lobe. If that fail to develop or fail to develop fully, or uh, it's been damaged totally. And the reason why he brought that insidious um, approach that he didn't realize that he's now addicted happens because the drug of um, abuse will give you some euphoria, which in fact, the the highest form of pleasure. So we we experience pleasure in our brains or in our minds. The highest form of pleasure known to man is actually sex. Mm -hmm. So air, food, water, sex gives us some pleasure, which is in the deep, in the middle part of our brains that is able to, I mean, feel that and give us the sensation that you feel good. That's why when you're hungry, you, you eat food. When we measure that of rats, or mice, we realize that whilst um, food is same way in the 200s and sex is a little above 300, we see cocaine and other hard drugs shoot to a, a thousand and above. So that tells you that those drugs of abuse will give a sensation of pleasure higher than what food, water, sex will give you. And unfortunately, again, the front, the temporal part, that is the brain at the side of, I mean, at the side of our face or the temples, that brain part is responsible for pleasure. So when that euphoria, I mean, is introduced and that part is, is fully matures when we are teenagers. So at the, at the teenage level, you are now beginning to kind of find a new experience because it's like a form of pleasure because you develop that, that pleasure center. So you experience the, the pleasure for the first time and it's very high, either through sex, I mean, drugs or anything. And very unfortunately, the memory center is linked to the pleasure center. So people don't forget how they felt 
when they were high. Then as they use it because they are high, their brain kind of obeys them that, hey, the way these drugs are coming, we, it appears we produce too many, what we call receptors to pick up the drug. So in medicine, we say that, or pharma, in pharmacy, we say that the receptors are downgraded. So when we downgrade them, or we downregulate them, it means that the same amount of drugs we are using for the brain to feel, for us to feel good, because the brain has downregulated the amount of receptors, you will need more of the drug to be able to get you the same feeling you used to feel. The feeling is recorded in your memory, so you don't forget the feeling. So if you use less amount and it, and it give you a smaller feeling, you'd want to try a very high feeling. And as human as we are, anything that is giving us pleasure, you seem to one day want to have the highest form of the pleasure. So what we end up getting is that one, some people we believe are born with defective receptors, meaning that by the way their nature is, whether they are black, they are white, by their nature, they do not have enough receptors for pleasure. So for these people, anything they start to abuse that give them pleasure, they are more likely to continue using it and they can't stop on their own. But the other thing, the second part is that if young people start using drugs early, they change their brain architecture, their structure, and that will make them require more drugs to feel high. And at that point, the brain has begun living with your um, drugs. So if you don't get a drug into the body, you get a discomfort. But the brain is telling you that my alcohol meter, my cocaine meter is low. It's going low. It is in red. So fill it up. So And they will become so uncomfortable. Some of them can even lead to death. But once they get the substance, they are either alcohol or anything they get that they've been abusing, they come back to normal. That is what we call the withdrawal syndrome. And that's for some like opioids, which is tramadol and pethidine and morphine, those ones and alcohol, they can kill you if you get a withdrawal. So it's quite dangerous. And mm -hmm. basically it is the essential science behind addiction. Mm, so the okay. earlier we catch it, the better. The earlier we catch it, the better. It's it's quite intriguing that one, the drug produces a high pleasure higher than sex, food, and water. <laughs> now it ends up damaging your brain, and for that matter, your decision making is impaired. But yes, still the memory, which should be impaired for you to forget the sensation, <laughs> is still intact. Wanting very more. intact, very much Wanting. alive very much alive, asking you that you want more and you have to go for more, more, more. The memory, the memory should have damaged as well as the decision making then everybody. Well, but uh, anyway, that is science. Thank you very much for that. Now it's clear now. Thank so you. that decision is, decision making is impaired and damaged. Memory is intact. So the memory asks you to go for more. Okay, so now uh, my next question, which uh, all of us are interested, each, each of you, my facilitators, uh, Juliana, are you on? Unmute yourself and let's see you and say hello to our participants before we move on. Juliana. Okay. Um, so my next question to all of you, my facilitators, is that the new ways in which our uh, young men and women are abusing drugs. What we used to know is this alcohol and smoking of weed, but now it's it's, it's a new ball game. So let me start with you, John. What do you know? Then I'll come to Bridget. Then I'll come to Dr. Godoy. Then our parents will know, parents will know that this is what is trending. So let me start with you, John. Yeah. Um, so these days, you know, I think drug use has become normalized in popular culture, as they call it. 
you know, in the movies we are watching, in the music we are listening to. And so they found they found a way to make it appealing to young, impressionable minds. Um, some of the common ones you find is these vape, you know, these electronic pens that they are able to recharge and smoke it. You find that even 13 year olds, 12 year olds in most of the schools we have uh, are vaping. And then shisha as well, you know, they make it. John, please slow down and give us a clear picture of this vaping thing so that we will get it right. When we say it, we'll say it. Okay, so the vaping, it's, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a pen. It's okay. like a pen. And then it's filled with some flav flavorful um, substance that you can smoke. And so, like I said in the beginning, they've been able to make it and brand it to be appealing to young people without them realizing how harmful it can be to them. So for them, they're just having fun or they're just being cool. But this is, some of them actually have nicotine and these are all substances that they can easily get addicted to and, you know, even um, go further into harder drugs because the nature of drugs is that when you take something and um, you're, you're not able to get the same high you get in the beginning, then you want to take something with a more high potency. And um, besides the vapes, another common one is the shisha. Oh, hold, hold on, George. Uh, John, yeah. how does the vaping instrument look like? Just like a pen or how do I identify it? So it's like a pen, but the, well, there are different types, but usually you see that the, the tip of it has a smaller um, rubber, rubber sort of, I think you would have to Google it to see because it's just like a pen. Usually it's like a pen. Some of them are flat. Some of them are circular, like the way pens are circles. And um, it simulates tobacco. So there are different flavors. So if, we, if I find something that looks like a pen, but not a pen, among pens of my children, I need to look at it twice again. Yes, yes. you need to really okay. pay attention. Okay, so go ahead with the Sisha. Yes, and so shisha as well. You know, shisha they've sold it to look like oh, it's just it's just fruits or it's just flavor, but it's it's harmful. It can it can harm your lungs. I'm not mm -hmm. a doctor, but I'm sure the doctors here would agree that um, smoking shisha is equally as as harmful as smoking cigarettes or any other substance. But that also has become normalized in. Um, how does that, in how does that one look like? You know, as for the harmful aspect, that one there is is pure and simple. We get that one. So yeah. the new ways of abusing the drugs, abusing drugs and all that. So describe it so that when I see it, I'll say it. Yeah. So for the shisha, it's like a pot. It's usually um you have a pot base and then it's connected with a tube. So okay. when you see it, it, usually it's just like the tube that we use to connect maybe a gas oven to a cylinder. And then it has the mouth opening for the inhaling. And then there's fire on top. It has a cool pot on top of the base yeah. that you light up the fire and smoke. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let me, let me, so hold on for now. You can refresh your notes. Uh, let me go to Dr. Dodoy um, and see what he has to say about this new ways. Then we'll see. Dr. Dodoy, yeah. take it out. Yeah, thank you very much. So the new ways, unfortunately, uh, we we are not getting them. Or some of them are not new. They are not new, but it's strange that we are not doing anything about it. So I'll talk about, I mean, I'm adding up to what my colleague just said. Is the substance they call lacquer or underground or atemuda or yellow, I mean, they have so many names for it. And this is marijuana or weed, weed, which has been put in alcohol or, or apprenticeship. The danger here is that the substance in marijuana or weed that make us high are referred to as the cannabinoids. These cannabinoids can dissolve easily, they don't dissolve easily in water, but they can dissolve in alcohol. 
So the chemical alcohol, which is which is ethanol, which is in apetashi, can um, should I say dissolve or infuse a lot of the cannabinoids from the marijuana plant. So when people put weed in apetashi, they get a lot of cannabis being consumed, even more than when they are smoking it, and it's also going in with alcohol, which is also I mean, a drug that make you high. And these things are very common. It is almost in every community. Somebody sells it there and they know. But uh, we have to do a, a national approach to clamp down on these things. So it's very important we do something about it. I mean, the way the world is going and we are not ready, it's sad. The other ways that we also use the weed again is when people mix it with shit off in high schools so they are mixed with food and the earlier one you mentioned which is the brownies the toffees so these are also there and the young people are ingesting it now the same marijuana or cannabis they have cannabis oil or marijuana oil whatever oil it is and people say, they, especially young people say they can't sleep. And these are the good ones anyway, who come to us to ask, so can I take it, the, the, the cannabis oil to sleep? I mean, that is the danger. So it is also being sold over the counter easily. And people are getting a, a lot of cannabinoids into their bodies. And okay. apart from the fact, we have a lot I mean, the plant itself grows naturally I mean, in our communities. So people have easy access to it. One other important, the other important one I would like to mention so that my colleagues will also add is the fact about the oral or the what we call the opioids. So the opioids are a group of drugs which naturally are painkillers. So when people are in pain, it's one of the highest drugs we give to like, remove pain. Unfortunately, it also gives you high. One of them is tramadol. And the other is codeine. Then we have the injectable ones like morphine, like pethidine. We can also inject tramadol as well. The problem we have with the OPS, which I'm very much sad and I think we should do something about is that the drug is a painkiller. It also delays ejaculation, meaning that when you are having sex, you are going to go on a long journey, as we say it in Ghana. So it means you are not going to get orgasm early enough. So when young people who already have the physique um, uh, and the strength abuse tramadol, what happens is that they can have sex for a long time because they are not... Um, getting the, they are not getting the orgasm. The orgasm may be delayed or not be there at all. So they can have a very delayed orgasm. And two, the drug tramadol is a painkiller. So they don't feel tired <laughs> because the drug does not give them the fatigue that we all get when we are. So they can, so, and young people think the drug give them strength to, I mean, um, have sex. If they continue like that, they can actually, cause impotence and that is quite dangerous now people also are abusing these things in cough syrup so that cough syrup that contain that contain codeine codeine is an opioid it was also in i don't know that it's still being marketed the akuma apc or apc tablet which is aspirin paracetamol and codeine there's codeine in there now we have a group of people which are health workers and persons living with sickle cell disease in Ghana. So these two people, health workers and sickle cell disease patients, are now injecting themselves pethidine. And they get all the side effects of the opioids. And unfortunately for the injection drug, it also comes with additional health risk. I mean, which it is far even more than the effect of the drug abuse itself. And I think it's very important we look at all these things. The, the shisha, Malik mentioned, 
of that. I mean, it's supposed to, I mean, um, so you usually have just have nicotine in it, but now they infuse with marijuana or weed and, and all of that. So it's quite devastating and it's getting worse in Ghana. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, some of our participants have shared uh, some of the vapes online as well as the shisha machine, so you can take a look at them. Uh, Madam Bridget, uh, let me come to you. What have you learned with these new ways, uh, apart from all that have been said? Um, Juliana is still on. Um, hello, Juliana. Unmute yourself and say hello. Perhaps you might want to check the volume on your phone or on your laptop, Juliana. Okay, Madam Bridget, please go ahead. All right. In, a, in addition to all that uh, Dr. Rodroy said, and then the first, we also have a phase of marijuana infused in what uh, we all know as Sobolo, our local drink Sobolo. Oh my goodness. But these are sold as special. Yes, but it's not all over. It's not to the general public. They have their own joints. Where they sell these they, or they buy these things from. So, so public, below that has space. marijuana. No, what I mean is, it's not open to everybody. They have their joints. Those who use the users know uh, where to get them. So, it's not every so below on the market that has marijuana. Okay. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> no, I should, I should, I should be alarmed okay. because, because uh, I should be alarmed because. Marijuana, for example, is the users know where you build the marijuana and it is bringing harm to the public. So in the same way, if they are making as simple as Sobolo, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's quite dangerous because you never know where you get, where somebody brings you something and you don't know. So that's my point. So in as far as they get, they, they, they know where to get it and it is as simple as Sobolo. It is as simple as Sobolo. If if I, I I am if I happen to pass by then they are selling this cool thing oh so blue and I like I buy one thing I'm dead as simple as that but when I see when I see and my that one, is what I'm saying that is why I said <laughs> that is why I said don't, don't be alarmed because it's not open it's not on the open market so okay. they have special joints where users go to assess them and then okay. they also have it the users also use it together with Indomie. So our uh, children who go to the boarding house, just as uh, Dr. Dore mentioned, Sheto, now it's in Indomie as well. When the users want to get somebody on board, they would offer the person Indomie that has marijuana in it. Some also use what we call chocolate. Uh, there have been instances where somebody would put a uh, chocolate in the freezer or fridge uh, only for uh, another to eat it, like the toffees, the edibles. And they are wondering, ah, why am I so elated? So they have been uh, instances where some people made the marijuana into chocolate. And that is also for the uses. It's not on the open market. And we also have the inhalants, well, uh, one called uh, laughing gas, nitrous oxide, that some people have access to. This is used in the medical field in our theaters for uh, anesthesia and things like that, but some have access to it and uh, it's called the laughing gas. And so they also make use of this. And uh, like um, John mentioned, the shisha is not only that uh, you smoke something. In fact, it's not just flavored, it is nicotine that has been made in that form, liquefied. And I, I heard about shisha first from females because of the nice flavor. And they were encouraging, oh, madam, it's very nice. The flavor is nice. I said, no, we need to find out. Years ago, we need to find out what it contains, only to realize that it contains nicotine. And so when you take it, just like he said, then you are taking in uh, tobacco or tar or cigarettes. And these are things we need to be mindful of. The um, vaping that he mentioned, there's a watch. Now it also comes in the form of a watch. And so you would think the child is wearing a watch 
but they are able to adjust the side that they have access to a part of it that they, are, they hail from. And I, I, I'm sure somebody would have placed it on the chat for you to see. So these are some of the things that happen. In addition to our alcohol, alcohol seems to be very common, but now it comes in all forms. And they also have the hallucinogenic mushroom. And so there's a particular mushroom that people use. Those who know it know. <laughs> and it's also a, a kind of substance that alters consciousness. Thank you. In fact, it's scary. I'm alarmed. Yeah. Because yeah. if now it has gotten into Sobolo, mm. Indomie, mm. chocolate, coffee, cake. Somebody mentioned cake on the platform. Cake and all that. So you find young men and women having a party and you see Sobolo there. You see cake there. You see them sharing toffee. And so, Charlie. Not knowing the thing that it is happening. Only God knows. Yeah. It's, 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 it's quite scary. This is some, some of the things that we should know. So parents, now these are the new, new ways in which they are doing it. So we need to, we need to know it. So below Indomie. Vape now. I'm wearing the awareness a nice watch, and you think it's a nice watch, classic watch, and something is happening. Chocolate, toffee, inhalers, cake, mushrooms. Wow. Anyway, so at least we know now when they are having their own small get together, we need to be looking out for these things. Exactly. Let me let me, let me stay with you, Bridget. Okay. Let me stay with you. So as a parent, as a parent, what common signs can I pick? Can I pick to tell me that my world has started playing with drugs? And so we, we need to be careful. What common signs? Uh, John, I'll come to you when when uh, uh, Madam Bridget is done for you to also give us that new science. So All go right. ahead. So, so because the substances affect the they are they affect the brain, the functioning of the person becomes altered, and most of this will show in their mood and then their behaviors. And so, like Doctor Dodo, I mentioned the. Uh, frontal lobe being the highest point for reasoning. So the person's reasoning becomes kind of altered and they are unable to see eye to eye with you on very simple issues. And uh, that can get them to be, by way of mood, to be very irritable. The least thing, the person is angry and they are getting into arguments that you wonder, why has my child become like this? And then for some of them, they appear very elated sometimes. And other times they have appear very depressed. And when it is so, they may isolate themselves. And they now begin to think that they don't fit in because the others are not like them. They kind of live beyond reality. They, 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 their life is kind of imaginary. And for the cannabis users, they lose the sense of time. And so there is no motivation to progress in anything they are doing because they don't even realize that time is elapsing. Hmm. Okay, okay. Huh. Wow. No, hmm. the anything? person. Okay. Yeah. But, but, no, John, hold on, please. Bridges is not done yet. Prior to the usage of the substance, so the clothes they weaving now be donning will be different from what they used to wear prior to the usage because they need to belong to the clique of those who use these things. Sometimes they may wear some kind of uh, uh, 
what we call uh, paraphernalia. Mm. And uh, with no offense to anyone, sometimes you see this red, gold, green, red, red, gold, green kind of uh, ornaments that they wear, mm. usually associated with these things. And then all sorts of necklaces and bracelets, you know, and then you begin to tell that mm, something is happening. Maybe their sleep pattern would also change. Appetite begins to change. A person may be eating too much or eating very little. They may also become, uh, uh, when they are, they are trying to make a point, they go around in circles and they, they don't make a point. And then you will realize that mm, this is not how my child has always been. Together with the fact that there is a very low motivation to do anything for themselves. Sometimes the person might even decide to drop out of school or they don't see the need to do anything for themselves. That, but most importantly, most of them will become argumentative and easily annoyed. And so they get into a lot of conflicts with family. And that is when they even draw closer to the people they, they've been using with. They, they begin to blame family rather that they are shunning them. Thank you. Thank you very much. John, is there anything that you would, you would like to add, considering your own personal experience, how you're able to hide your drug use from your parents that they could not detect until when it got out of hand? Apart from what um, um, Madam Bridget has said. I think Madam Bridget has mentioned so many vital points. But some also is um, withdrawal. You know, when I was when I was using, I I started to withdraw from my family. So anytime there was a family family gathering, I would find an excuse not to be there because I didn't want to be amongst them. I I would rather be with my friends smoking, and I also knew that if I if I stayed with them too much, they may be able to start seeing some of the signs that I was smoking. So. One of the things, you, the, one of the major things you see is that your your world will start withdrawing from the family activities and from you know anything that involves involves the family. The other thing too is academic dec uh, decline. Um, I was a first class student when I got to school, but because of the addiction, before I realized, I I started failing my courses. So parents should be vigilant with their awards, academics as well. You can see if you see a, a sharp you know, turning the way they perform, you can you can suspect that something is happening. Um, then financial problems, all of a sudden, they are always having money problems, you know, every day they are looking for money to do this or to do that. It, it can tell you that they are probably wasting money on drugs and that's why they are having, you know, such financial problems. I believe some those are some of the, um, the things you can observe to know your, your child is using a drug. In addition to all that you mentioned, uh, one of our participants mentioned petty crime, petty crime. So I think that that should be related to the financial problems that they go. So it's the a lot of signs that we could we could have that we have to detect that something is going wrong. They get irritable, angry, elated, depressed, isolated. There is a sense of loss of time. And that we realize that the progression, they don't progress in anything. They are dressing changes, they wear stuff that signifies that there is a group cohesion somewhere. They are sleeping or eating patterns changes either less or more. They are illogical in their reasoning. They start from Kanesi through Suhum, come back to Odoko and it doesn't make sense. There's more, there's low motivation to do anything. And so they are not interested in going back to school. Argumentative, very, gets easily angry. Uh, there is academic retrogression. You realize that their performance academically has dropped. Wow. There are a lot of signs for us to be able to tell if something is going wrong. Um, Juliet, uh, Juliana, can you hear me? 
Juliana can hear me, but when she talks, we can't hear. So sorry, so sorry. Um. So, Dr. Dodoy, are you there? Very much here. Good. In your clinic as a consultant, we are going to discuss two things here. Okay. Uh, the, the physical health aspects and the mental health aspects. So let's discuss the physical health aspects. Don't say, don't say, oh, leave some for Madame Bridget and 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 John. <laughs> don't light the fire and say, oh, we are going to discuss the physical health as well as the mental health. So let's discuss <laughs> them. Let's discuss yeah. the physical health. Yeah. I, I mean, what I do think you see, what, 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 what do you see in, in the consulting room? Briefly with the the physicals, okay, and um, okay. to just make our listeners appreciate this so i'm not going technical and all that yes so there is something we used to say in medical school no tb you know the whole of medicine that is the subject the other one was no alcohol you know all the all medicine so by that what we meant was that alcohol and drugs can affect every part of our bodies, every part. So if you start from our head, alcohol, drugs can give us strokes in our head. It can give us blindness. I mean, we can have damage to the eye nerve and we can't see. We come to the heart, alcohol and drugs can give a condition called cardiomyopathy, which means that your muscles become so sick that there is no known way to reverse it. The only way is to do a heart transplant, which is not available in Ghana. You know, it can damage your liver, your kidneys, because when you're taking these drugs, whether through the blood or like injection or mouth, or you smear it, it's getting to your blood. It goes through the liver. Now you're giving the liver extra work to do because apart from removing waste from the food we eat, now the, the liver also have the job of breaking down the drugs that we are abusing and to take them out through the kidneys. And so all, both organs can easily get damaged. I think I, I usually say this in class and it's the, the hope is that it makes everybody always remember it. That nature or God gave us some very important structures in our bodies. Say so that because of their so much importance, um, there is a barrier, a very strict frame control about what chemicals can get in and what they cannot get in. And the biggest one we have is the blood brain barrier. So these are such that they, um, they, they can only some drugs or antibiotics can even cross the blood brain barrier to I mean, effect treatments. But I'm not talking about that. The other important barrier, which I think is very important, is the blood testis. Hello, bar. dog. Hello? So Dr. 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 Hold on. Bad. Let me Dr. 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 hold on. Let me check something. Juliana, is that you? Hello, Don. Yes, that is me. So sorry. Finally. I don't know what is wrong with my laptop. Finally. Uh, finally so I had finally. to join through my phone. I think that could be the best option. Okay. Okay. Thank so you, you. Thank you. So thank you for, for being IT compliant. Uh, I'll come back to you yeah. shortly, Juliana. Hold, hold on. Yeah, hold on, let me just great, run off. And great. Then, let me just uh, I mean, like, run off and let um, Julie come in. So... The, the challenge is that the testis is a very important organ. It is what makes us male. It's what gives us the sexual drive. It's what gives us the physical energy and the, the pleasure of work, especially the, the, the physical one. So that is why God in his wisdom put a barrier there, just as he put the one for the brain. If you see how important the brain is, that is how the testis is. Unfortunately, 
alcohol and drugs can damage the testes, which will make our young men impotent. You know, and there's this story about a pastor telling people to come and share their testimony. One guy came and said, Pastor, so no, say it now, say it loud. So, Pastor, no, I'm sorry. And the pastor said, Hey, I came to heal the sick, but not to raise the dead. So, the, the message here is that when you get the impotence as doctors, we cannot do much about it. We can raise, I mean, we can heal the sick. But when you come and as I can say, we don't resurrect the dead. Mm -hmm. So that is one important damage that drugs that give you the initial euphoria for sex rather will kill the very I mean, organ you want to use to get that euphoria through sex. And it's one important thing that we have that it even affects the, the quality of their spams and therefore the, the kind of children they give birth to. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I know you were listening. Uh, with the current spate of new ways of drug abuse, just, just by way of refreshing and getting you back into it, uh, you heard what they said. So refresh your memory and tell us if there is something that they have left out. But before you come in, please allow me to go and read a few comments that our participants have shared with us. Um, Messiah J, this is really scary. God help us. Indeed, God help us. Uh, Judith Asiedu, she says, what is in the used diapers that the boys inhale? What is in the used diapers that the boy inhale? I have not heard of that one. Dr. Dodo, I have not heard about that one. Well, you can note it down. Maybe you can, as we move along, you can comment on it. Afefa um, Kowonu uh, says, hey, hey, watch, pa. I think she's referring to the watch in which they are, they are using now. I'm learning a lot. I'm a teacher, so this is very enlightening for me. Good. Um, Abdul Latif Seydou. Awesome education here. Thank you, organizers. Great presentation. Mrs. Amuakwata, John, and Doctor. Okay, thank you, too. Uh, Judith says, and how about the super glue they inhale? Judith have mentioned two things, super glue and the baby diapers. Okay. Uh, Redex says, currently, you don't eat or drink anything at young parties or gathering without asking the content. I think that is a that is a good good suggestion. You don't just take anything. You just don't take anything, especially when there are the simple things that we nibble and drink on. Okay. Um, MK added biscuits. Um, Redick again says, it is improper to leisurely open a person's fridge and eat anything because you know them. This has been the plight of some people who stepped beyond their boundaries. Well, I think that's true. Um, frankly, Maoko Pelly, some of the weed is even kneaded into the coconut toffee, Kube toffee. Wow, Kube toffee too has suffered. Afefaku Anu, very true. Most of the children in the basic school, especially basic Six, basic five and six are exposed to it. Hmm. Redick again says, in cake, polo, zoe, etc., are currently infused, not on the general market though, but those that are shared in parties and gatherings of these youths. So in short, when your young person is going to a party, then what is the point of going to a party and not eating anything. Just ask before you take in something. But what, hmm. Franklina says that, I think there is an abuse of Danwell tablet and syrups and the fin hydramine found in cough syrups like Coffex and Difex. It should be looped into place. FDA is here, so Julie, somebody is giving you an assignment. This cough, cough mistress. 
Uh, Mariam says, I'm enjoying the discussion. Thank you, Mariam. Uh, Akuno Fiancun says, petty crime is one of the major signs. Accusative crime, yeah, when we mentioned the signs and symptoms, signs that parents could, could pick up if they was were engaged in drug abuse. Okay. Thank you. Um, Samsung, I'm happy I joined because it's very educative. Thank you. Um, Ayilo Nobet Ayamba, may we get the slide after the presentation? Uh, Nobet, nobody is using a slide here. It's a recording. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is your first time, but all our virtual seminars are recorded and uploaded onto YouTube. So go on to YouTube, just subscribe to our channel. And the moment it's uploaded, you would get it. All of them. This is the 30th one that we are doing. Dr. Dora, did you know that? That is the 30th one. Yeah, that's the 30th one. You've, you've muted yourself. Dr. Dora, you've muted yourself. Sorry about that. I was saying that it's about three years and three times yeah. 12 36 because uh, the authority has been very consistent, very consistent. Th 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 that is one. commendable, mm -hmm. very commendable. Somebody, uh, Aaron, Aaron seems to like your, Aaron, I appear I've been, seems to like your face. I came to raise the sick, not the dead. <laughs> uh, Norbert is asking, Please, can anxiety also cause impotence? Dr. Dada, please note that one down. No, I think, Bridget, please note that one down and respond when you have the opportunity. Can anxiety also cause impotence? Um, techno, quite an insightful presentation. Thanks to all the facilitators. Thank you too for coming. Nathaniel Labianda, please, can you speak about the watch thing? I want to know more. Humphrey, Mr. Humphrey Mensa, are you with us? Akono um, Fianco, sexual promiscuous activities may be a sign of drug abuse among girls. May, you are using the word may, so we are not too sure here. But uh, I think uh, as parents, we can look at it. Maria Masani, very informative. Dr. Richmond Adusa Poku, letalin syrup is so much abused that we have to battle with them in the pharmacies. They are buying them rough, rough. <laughs> Dog. Michelle Oga, very educative. I'm happy mm -hmm. I joined this webinar, uh, Michelle. Thank you for joining, Michelle. Uh, we do it at the end of every month, and when we get the fly, also share and invite others to join. Thank you for joining. In Phoenix, please, what drug do the addict mix with rush drink and to become hyper? And why the state allow such drugs into the country? Julie, this is a question for you. Please note it down. I'm reading it again. Please, what drug do the addict mix with the rush drink to become hyper? and why the state allow such drugs into the country. I think the second part should be you, should, but I think you would know since you go into the field. Um, Sylvia Wallace, Adjoa Chu, Super Glue and Shoemaker's Glue are all used these days. Hmm. Ivy, very educative, thank so much. Organizers, more of this, please next time. Kindly make it a CPD program. Yes, we are working towards that, Ivy. Um, Nathaniel Labi Anda, apart from the drugs you have mentioned, do you also consider red sun and other sexual drug substances abuse, especially when it's on the high demand by the market? That's what Dr. Dodoy said. They are buying it, using it, and they will get impotent in the final analysis. Well, that's 
that we'll go back to the comments that you've shared, so I know where I am now. So, uh, Madam Julia, please unmute yourself. What new things, new ways of abusing drugs have you identified when it gets into the public? Well, thank you so much. And I wish to apologize once again for my inability to join and um, due to the technical hitches I was facing. Um, I think what has been discussed earlier is not more different from what we also get on the ground when we go out during our public education activities. Um, the iPhone, I must say, was recently um, brought to our table. I mean, the watch, one that um, the youth can use to smoke. What John elaborated um, in his old days when he got hooked to drugs is exactly what is still going on, but as Dr. Judoy said, more of them are being added on. So I must say there's nothing much. Um, I'm happy one of the participants um, just mentioned on the super glue of which we have also got to know about, but I'm really new to the baby diapers because when we go on to the, um, the, the ground um, to communicate with the youth, we haven't yet gotten on this baby diapers. But I would love to comment much on the um, opioid ones that we know that um, most of the youth are using, which Dr. Judoy mentioned, that is the tramadol. Um, FDA recommends or we register or approve the registration of tramadol with the strengths of 35.5 milligram, 50 milligram, and then 100 milligram. But unfortunately, during our surveillance, when we go out onto the market and the, the fields, we come across the tramadols with the highest strengths, such as 225 milligram, um, 125 milligram and the likes. And during our surveillance, we also realized that um, the rush drink that the participant was asking, that is what they actually mix with the high strength of tramadol with the rush drink. And so that combination then gives them the high, high, you know, and feeling that they, they wish to explore. And I must quickly add that FDA saw these public nuisance, and um, let me put it that way, in way back 2016. So we quickly had to put a ban on these other drugs that we noticed our neighboring countries were pushing in into our country. And for instance, codeine, which we is usually used in the formulation of cough syrups, is also abused. And we realize that our neighboring countries, such as Nigeria, um, the up up um, Algeria, all of them were starting with these kind of um drugs. And so it we thought it's wise that if we do not make a preempt. Customs, um, should I say, di dimension or measure, definitely it will scoop into the the uh, youth and then they can take it on, even more than what the neighboring people are introducing. And I must say, with our ECOWAS entry exits from our neighboring countries, all these kind of attitude or behavior can be adapted when they they mess they mix up with our youth or our citizenry. So in short, I must say we had to ban um the influx of codeine. We had to change our formulations of cough syrups, whereby we do not add them to the cough syrups, whereby people can easily get it. And then we quickly came up with the guidelines um on the sale and supply of use of these controlled drugs, which I mentioned. Um, tramadol is an abused drug, but what we have is for pain management. And so if we see those with the higher strength on the market, as soon as we get a notice where we go out to our surveillance, we make sure that we flag them out, we flush them out of the market. And those corporates we get, they are brought to book. And so there are a lot of people who are in jail or they are being prosecuted. And due to these things that they had uh, entertained themselves with, um, 
to add on, I must say that during the public educations, most of the um, interactions we had with the kids were that they know they, they, they learn from the elderly. And so if they see their elder brothers, their mummies, their daddies entertaining themselves with these things, they also want to make an exploration. So not only peer pressure, but then the role models, for instance, are celebrities. When they are on their music trial, they, their videos, they show the, the, the smoking, they show the drinks always in the cup, red cup, without you noticing the content that is in. There are always whispers, those who shoot will say, oh, when Shatawali is drinking, maybe he's using this. So you people, let's try it. And then this is what goes on. So they they kind of put themselves in that mentor, celebrity's shoes just to know that, oh, of course, they are also riding in the same car with them. Um, basically, this is what we, we noticed um, during our educational um, activities when we go out um, and then I'm monitoring. I, I, I can choose to go in and own, but I, I must say that all what our other panelists mentioned are definitely what we see, not forgetting the laughing gas. I believe um, last year, UK had a tremendous public health issue with gas to the nitrous oxide. So we quickly had to bring out um, an, a press release to sensitize the public regarding this new nuisance people are engaging themselves in. I mean, when we go to parties, they were using it at parties. They blow the balloons with the nitrous gas. And so then if you want your party to be, hey, you are you you on top, you just take one balloon, you sniff, you put it in your mouth or you sniff it through your, and you will laugh throughout the party. I mean, to, to entertain yourself. And we quickly had to bring in mergers to, you know, put a stop to this. Um, yes, that, that is what I can put on 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 floor now. Any other questions? I'm ready to pick them up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you very much. Uh, that's quite informative. So clearly, uh, FDA is doing much to protect us uh, from some of these harmful uh, things that is going on. Uh, Bridget, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. Good, good. So, so, uh, drug abuse and mental health for me. Drug abuse, how does it impact on our mental health? I know we've we've mentioned in bits and pieces how it impacts on our mental health. Make it clearer for us. All right. So, once the person is taking in medication that ha or some drug that has not been uh, prescribed for them because they have no use for it or no need for it. They take it in and then it impairs in their psychological, physical and social functioning. Mm -hmm. And we know that when you are able to manage these domains of your life, then we would say you have mental wellness or you are well mentally. And once there's an impairment in any of these domains, then it means you are not well. So our mental health oh, is sustained. When we stay away from Bobby. such Bobby, is it your, your to get into the body and affect the functioning of the body in any sense. Now, when you have a substance use, it alters the person's perception, it alters their consciousness, and it alters their reasoning capabilities. So perception is based on how we view things around us or how we make meaning of the stimuli around us, information around us. If the person is using substance and its effect is altering their perception, then they will have different and unusual meanings to what information they gain around them. Because some of these substances will have heightened alertness and some would also cause the person to have what we will call perceptual distortions. So the person, nothing is happening, but they see images that are not there. Nobody else is seeing them, but they would see them. They will have such experiences. They may hear voices 
that do not exist because you know when we are looking at perception perception is arrived at based on the use of our sensory organs the meaning the function of these sensory organs and Perfect. so a perceptual distortion then these sensations get altered so the person is seeing all right but what they are seeing may or may not be present they yes, may hear really. they may be hearing voices that do not exist, but for oh. them, they are that them. the person may also have some beliefs that do not exist. They think it's so real. They might believe that somebody is after them. Somebody has set up a, a gang against them, or they are being monitored all over, and that makes their behavior. All of these would inform the person's behaviors. So if there are no images, for instance, you and I see that there is nothing in our environment, but the person sees some image, maybe somebody coming at them with a, a, a knife. They will scream and run away. And so you would say that the person runs away without being chased. That is how observers would see this. But the person running away is experiencing something that they deem dangerous to their safety. You get it. And yes. then other times, the person is hearing somebody, some voices or a voice My own, I'll start. where nobody is talking. They are the only ones who experience these. In our religious uh, background, because of our, our, our setting as Africans, we are highly religious. Most of these are, most of these are taken from uh, spiritual gifts. So the person will say that I hear God speaking with me. Or are seeing, they will say that they are seeing visions. And if we are not fortunate and they come across some pastor who is uh, into all these things, who doesn't know their word much, then they would tell the people, reinforce what they are experiencing that, oh, you have been called by God, you have a gifting. You know, and all of these inform the person's behaviors. So if the person is seeing, the sea in their room. Why would they sleep in their room and be drowned in the sea? So they will refuse to sleep and they will refuse to go into their room. The person is hearing a voice that we are coming after you, we are going to kill you. So they'll keep running. And they kind of become very creepy because they are seeing that there's something monitoring them. Somebody will say that there's a satellite monitoring them. So they will keep being hiding all around and people will not understand. They are hearing voices, they are having conversations, so they will be talking back to these people, to these voices that are non-existent. Or they will act based on the information they are deriving from the voices they are hearing, which is a hallucination, we would call it. Some may even think that, or they, they believe that there is something inside of them, whereas there may be nothing, and it's part of all the perceptual disturbances they have. Some would even say something is creeping on, on them or under their skin. There, are, there have been instances where people said people were sitting on their head or they would believe that maybe their partner is married to another. Some have gone to the extent of saying their own husbands were having intercourse with their uh, mother, mothers-in-law. So the husband is sleeping with the mother, their, their own mother. And these have generated a lot of challenges for people. Aside these facts that uh, the abuse would do this, it also gets the person to become psychologically dependent on the substance so that there is the need or a, a very serious edge to use the drug or the substance regularly so they can maintain a comfortable psychological state. If they do not get this, then they go be sick as if the world has crashed. And that also informs the kind of behavior. And so they cannot even relate well with others. They cannot interact as they should. They cannot function and be productive as they should in whatever they are engaged in. And then they can get to the point where they get what we, they get into the state of addiction, where the chemical or the substances they are using, you know, most of these are chemicals. So they get directly into the functioning of the person's body so that without a top up or a, an intake of the substance, they begin to suffer withdrawal symptoms. 
And these, we, Dr. Dodoy explained the withdrawal symptoms, it's as if they are dying. And if you are a relative, if you don't take care, you would even enable them by giving them some of the substance to take them out of the near death situation. <laughs> that is the unfortunate aspect of all of these. And so I don't know, maybe uh, others would want to add on to it, but basically it can cause a lot of uh, mental illnesses. It can create anxiety problems. It can get the person to be depressed because sometimes that's not what they really want to do, but they are unable to quit because they have become addicted to it or dependent on it. It also gets them into a lot of social problems and challenges. Financially, they will have to, and uh, I mean, maintain that behavior. And if the drug, the substance use is stopping you from being productive, then definitely income would also be affected. So the person will now have to engage in very dubious means. So they may become uh, 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 dubious people. They, they, they kind of do go around, tell stories and do people to make more money. They may become thieves and armed robbers. So it has far reaching implications than we are even uh, aware of. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That is quite extensive. Because uh, so what I'm getting in short is that uh, their mental health implications begins when they are having hallucinations, they're having delusions, their level of reasoning is impaired uh, to the extent that they become dependent on the drug and they move into a state of an addiction, which is a disease in itself. These are troubling consequences for them. And in actual fact, it, it extends beyond the individual person because it moves on to the family and siblings and the society as a whole. Because here we are, we have we have a lot of them on the street, and we now have to find strategies of getting those people uh, off the street and uh, uh, treated and back into the community. All these are social and financial costs for all of us. Wow, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Bridget. Um, Julie, are you there? Yes, please. I'm around. Very good. Now, with the new ways of abusing drugs, all of them uh, looks <laughs> for choice of better word. One looks acceptable. You you see hmm. people drinking sobulu eating cake, uh, uh, achumo, whatever, all of those little, little things, which looks normal, but all of them have been infused with one drug or the other. Now, as for FDA, you've, 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 you've enlightened us on the clear steps that you have taken to prevent the import of bringing in some of these uh, drugs. Now, your I, I want your advice to individuals how they can how we can prevent the sale and use of these drugs because they are look they look so simple. You go into the community and you engage people. Mm -hmm. In what ways can we prevent avoid the sale and use of these drugs from 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 your perspective? Okay. Uh, if, 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 as, if you can put your hand down for a minute, I'll get back to you when I open the floor, please. Uh, uh, Julie, please go on. All right. Thank you, John. Um, looking at these um, things, I, I must say we currently had a situation whereby we had a student was advertising um, pastries, which was infused with um, et cetera, et cetera. So quickly we had to apprehend do more investigations and it's still under undergoing further. Um, and the, the, the child, I'm sure they would have to be um, put on. Their parents do not know that this is what their, their son is doing. So Bolo being sold. With FDA, we know that whatever you have to put on the market, you need the registration numbers, etc. 
so that it will definitely make your product very safe for consumption. So in short, I would say that if as citizens, whatever that we want to pick to eat, whatever that we want to buy to eat, can you see to it that it has an FDA approved number? With that, I'm sure you'll be on the safer side to consume the products. When it comes to drugs, um, with this tramadol um, and their likes, um, I'll group them to be the opioid, which falls under the narcotics drugs. And um, that's the 1961 UN Convention drugs. Um, we saw the need to entertain the tramadol to be on the POM drugs. When I say POM drugs, it means the prescription only medicines. So without a prescription from a recognized or qualified doctor, you cannot purchase tramadol to take. We have, we've had trainings after we had even um, outlined the new guideline on the sale and um, supply and use of these drugs. We indicated with the uh, other agencies, that's the pharmacy council and the likes, the doctors um, in the various health um, facilities to enter, to ent and train them and sensitize them on the new drugs that we've added on on Ghana's schedule, that is with, in with inclusion with the tramadol, that if you want to give a patient tramadol, kindly put it on a prescription form so that if your hospital or facility cannot give it to the patient to take it at the prescribed time, then when he goes out to purchase it outside from any pharmacy, a prescription form must be accompanied with it with the stamp, the signature of the doctor, and all of the other necessary requirements needed. So in short, doing we do monitor, monitor the pharmacies um, across the country. We go, we check on the prescription drugs, the forms they receive from recipients, and those who do not do that, we put them to book. So I must say that if you are going to the hospital for any medic for any illness or condition, please stick to what your doctor wants to give to you. There's no point in going to abuse what you have been given. You need a sound mind. You need a healthy body. Why would you want to say you want to die with um, this disease when maybe a little of this drug could have made you feel so good? You know, I mean, better, not good as in feeling high, <laughs> to, to make you good, better, feel better. Uh -huh. So I would uh, plead, I'll plead with um, the uh, people on, on, on online today. I'm sure this education will go down, trickle down to our friends, our family members, everything. Just let them know these are the things that we need to do. I know some people are uh, be like, Oh, the last time I was sick, when I went to the hospital, I had the same symptoms. The doctor prescribed, um, let's say, tramadol for me. So this time around, why don't, in order for me not to go back to the doctor, let me go and just purchase it. When you go to the pharmacy shops, you are not going to be given because you wouldn't have a prescription to attain that. The same applies with pethidine, which is even more, more abused. It used to be abused more with the health professionals, but I know now because of these new uh, procedures we have brought in, um, it's it's not on the upsurge. I mean, the increments is not as there as before. And so more people are being sensitized and trained. And I'm sure this platform has op also opened more people's eyesight on what they need to do um, in keeping this drug abuse menace. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Julie. Uh, let's hope we'll have a clean, a clean state that mm. that will be free of all these drugs and uh, the implications of cost and all that will be free from them. Um, now, my question to all of you, my fantastic participants. Uh, let me start with you. Uh, the media. Um, the media, in what ways do you think that the media can help in all this 
strategies that we are talking about with the use of the sale, the avoidance and all that. In what ways do you think that the media can help? Let me start with you, Bridget. Right. So I am thinking that um, once they, they hold a lot of shows, that uh, reality shows and what have you, they could engage some of these um, topics or for discussion to get people aware of what is going on and how to keep them. They could also, uh, we could also have some of these information and it's good that uh, MHA is having this on YouTube so that people could have access to such information on the internet and wherever we have ourselves, we find ourselves so we can publicize some of these information for people to become aware. I am thinking that uh, uh, civic uh, education should take it up. And then even though you said media, it should extend to our uh, educational program, curriculum, I mean, so that it starts from the basic schools because you'll be surprised to find out that very young people in uh, lower primary started their first use way back. I mean, people started way back when they were in lower primary. You will be surprised. And especially when they are done with their BEC and they have their parties, that's where most of them use for the first time. So if the schools educate them, then they get to become aware and know how to uh, avoid some of these dangers. So, okay. uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. John? Hello, John. Are you there? <laughs> Dr. Dodo, please take it up. What do you think the media can do to help with all this? Yeah, I, I believe the media can help us a lot. And um, I'll, I'll probably uh, talk about what I think may be peculiar and my other contestants probably might share those ones. We have Julia here, and um, I think the FDA was in the news recently about not allowing public figures or showbiz people in alcohol adverts. And that is a fantastic policy they've got out there because one of the ways drug abuse, drugs are abused, which, which, have been, which has been shared here is the fact that the young people idolize these people. And therefore, if they do drugs or they are seeing alcohol and drugs adverts, then you're telling young people that it is cool for if I want to be like a Kroboto, if I want to be like, I mean, uh, a Shatewale and he drinks alcohol, then I can drink. If he smokes, then I can smoke. So that is a huge thing. And once the Supreme Court has given them that mandate. I expect that that is enforced. And we will be grateful if FDA can, in that line, ban young ladies in alcohol adverts because there is no safe time to drink alcohol whilst we are pregnant. Meanwhile, we never know we are pregnant until we are pregnant. So many times people are pregnant without knowing. And if they are taking alcohol, it will damage the unborn baby. So it's important FDA goes a step further to ban, I mean, apart from the celebrity in alcohol adverts, but young women, because every woman of reproductive age, should, should, it's not safe for them to drink alcohol. So that is very important. Then one other thing, which I have a paper on, uh, probably I'll look for the paper uh, and then put it here. It's called the myths of alcohol use in Ghana. So it's very important we do a bit of medical anthropology where we study what are the behaviors and the beliefs associated with alcohol and drug use. For instance, I mean, there's a popular presenter on radio who says that we is to make the black man wise. And I mean, that is why the white wants as to ban we, but that is what even King Solomon smoked and he was very wise. So, I mean, these things are myths in our communities and people, young people pick these things. 
So there should be a public education to debunk these myths about alcohol and drug use. There's one that is that if your grandmother has put a god that is G-O-U-R-D in your tummy until somebody prays and break it, you will drink, uh, I mean, forever. So people are drinking, they have problems, they're using drugs. They say, no, it is somebody who has put that burden on them. So they have to go to a prayer camp and they go on drinking and all that. So it's very important. And lastly, about that is, I mean, the government has started producing astroturfs around. So sports is one of the ways if, and other competitions. Like if you have an essay competition, mathematics competition, you know, sports, when young people compete in um, such things, the winning in, in a game, in anything that you compete with, brings some pleasure similar to drug of abuse. So if they, we engage them in active sports and they compete to do well in the sports, of course, they are, they are also abusing steroids to be more masculine <laughs> sports, you know. But if we get them into sports and they compete, they can get that good feeling from the sports and then they will shy away from um, doing drugs. And I think these things are policy level that, they, that as a nation, we need to take. Thank good you. Morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. So before I come to you, Julie. Um, good morning. Who uh, oh, is saying good, good morning? morning. Um, it's me, Paul Champagne. I'm calling from Germany. I mean, I'm in Canada. I join your your program. Uh, Prof, can you please hold on for me a moment? Um, so, like I was saying, um, Julia, before you come in. Next month, I've been asked to inform us about our next month's seminar, which is on the phone addiction, and we are over flooded. We are going to do a part two of it, and this is what we want to do. Um, we want our participants, which I know most of you were on that day, we, we had over 500 participants. We want you to come and tell us what your experiences have been the strategies that were provided, what has worked and what has not worked, then now there will be new questions for our facilitators. So that is what we are going to do next month. So be on the lookout for that. And before all of us will go away, I'll, I'll share my screen with a list of uh, rehabilitation houses so that if somebody needs help somewhere, you know where you can contact. So please don't go away yet. I'll share that very soon. I'll share that very soon. Uh, Prof, uh, let me give you the opportunity to make your comments now. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Yeah, yes. thank you so much, uh, moderator. I'm, I'm so happy that uh, uh, you started something of this nature in terms of, I mean, this health, mental health education in Ghana at the moment. In fact, uh, I must also say that uh, I believe you are aware of the initiative taken by uh, Lady Julia. I'm uh, talking about the, her, her royal um, highness, Utunfo's wife, who has started something in this in this uh, regard, where if I happen to be a, a, a board member of that uh, committee or something of that nature, which we are doing in Kumasi at the moment, as, as we speak, I'm on holidays now. So what I'm saying is, that in fact, drug abuse and this, which culminates into issues of mental health, oh, is yeah. too much in our system. And that um, I'm happy once again for the steps that you have taken in addressing the issues. And it's good, and I, I commend you highly for doing that, that. But there's another thing that um, your, your um, resource person spoke about in respect of, in respect of um, the source of drugs or the source of substances that people abuse. I don't know whether you are aware. You know, the physics, the physical remains of uh, even lizards, 
Hey, I don't, it may be interesting, babe. I believe that you know it. Fika remains of blizzard. The white part of it is also being used as a source of uh, drug. I mean, in substance abuse, the white part of it is burnt and people inhale it. And I understand it can also send them into that level of um, uh, what pleasure. mental state. Yeah, yeah, that sort of mental pleasure. I believe that that one is also. And then for the FDA, I would suggest that if it is possible, those things that are being used as, um, um, what do you call it, energy, energy replenishing fluid or drinks that are all over in the in our shelves, especially when you go to filling stations to buy fuel, you can dash in and buy some of them. Um, if they can have a second look at it and just check to see if someone depends so much on it, I believe it can also result in some level of abuse and which will eventually lead to all these mental alteration that can also cause us I mean, so much of a problem. All so right. I will just thank, thank you very much, Prof. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. You've made your point. Well, it might interest you to know that we are starting, but this is our 30th uh, virtual seminar. Uh, we started about three years ago and we are consistent. And so this is the 30th one. You'll find all of them on YouTube. Uh, if, you type, if you type in FHA webinar, all of them will pop up. Um, at this point, um, Julia, you would have you have the opportunity to uh, say what the media can do in helping us uh, send this message across. Uh, looking at our time, I think that it's about time I allow a few questions to come in, then I'll read some of our comments. So Julia, when you get the opportunity to respond to a question, you can tie in the media strategies as well. At this point, let me ask um, uh, Ivy, A70, unmute and ask your question. And who you want to respond to it for you? Ivy, unmute yourself. Ivy is not here. So, Julia, please go ahead. All right. Thank you, Doug. Um, with the media, I know they have a lot that they can do to help. Um, when it comes to education, uh, once, once um, an adage says, catch them young and they forever will be yours. We believe um, if we are given more air times as their social responsibility. I know when you even want to go to the media stations, especially to, you know, um, sensitize people, it comes with cash and they charge, charge a lot. And so if they can, you know, have this at their heart that we want um, our citizenry to be healthy, they can give us lots and then mental health authority can come maybe one of their morning shows in the afternoon shows and um, evening shows, whichever time they want. So as can they have medical practitioners also coming in, FDA coming in, just as we are doing here. And then with this, when it's consistent, I'm sure every hook and crook of Kana in Ghana will hear about things that are going wrong when they abuse things, I mean, or when the, the new menace in drug abuse that is going on, everybody hearing it will then caution themselves, you know, and that would go a longer way. I wish to add one more thing. I think um, family bond, opening, open communication with our children is one thing that parents i know everybody wakes up in the morning hey i'm off to work going to find something to for, to provide for the family and so we go we do all these things not seeing what our children are doing mm. so if we need to have time the media with this education aspect those who go to the offices that they don't get to know what is happening will then come back and say oh we heard this in the news when we are at the workplace and so Let's check on our children. Both the parents, the spouses would then, okay, Charlie, let's see. What, when they go to school, let's communicate with them. What happens at school? Did somebody engage something that they saw? What do they know? Can we educate them? 
I think that is one. I want to add on to what Auntie Bridget also mentioned, our curriculum, what are our, our, our policymakers doing? We need to put in this our curriculum so that from the infant stage, I mean, going from primary upwards, they know what drug abuse is about, you, what it does to the family, what it does to the individual himself, what it will even deteriorate you. I mean, you will not go anywhere. We have ambitious students. We have ambitious children. They want to become pilots. But when you engage in drugs, these are the things that will, the consequences that will happen to you without attaining what you wish, you wish to have or becoming in the future. So I believe that when we have these media coming in to help with our policies, with our things that we have put in on, on, on the ground, yes, it will help. It will take us a long way. And I know education is a key to all most of our public promotions or health promotions activities that we do. I think that is what I can add on to what the other panelists have said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's hear from Faustina. Faustina, unmute yourself and ask your question. Who we want to respond to? Faustina. Okay. It looks like they raised their hands unintentionally. I'm, I'm, I'm around, Doctor. Please, good afternoon, and thanks so much for this opportunity. My, my concern is about these drug peddlers who are always in these information centers, selling one medicine for all ailments without even the assemblies talking much about it. Don't you think that one is also a cause of this drug, uh, these things we are talking about? Because in some of the the community centers, when someone talks about it, then even the community members, they are, they are against it. So what is the food and drugs board doing about this? Because I see that to be one of the, the, the challenges also causing these problems. Thank you. Thank you very much, Faustina. Um, Julia, would you like to respond to it quickly? Um, yes, Doug. Um... I must say, um, from my very onset, um, I mentioned my 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 submission. I mentioned that we do public education. We go to the marketplaces. We go to the bus terminals. I mean, every corner you can imagine. This, as you mentioned, um, I would say we are also Africans. We believe in these herbal drugs that can you know heal of our ailments and all that some would want to go to the orthodox method others would like to go to the herbal section i mean the traditional way of healing their ailments what we i mentioned earlier i said if you want to take in anything please bear in mind that you should look out if the product has been registered with food and drugs authority if you go in for these ones that are not regulated by the authority, I must say you might end up losing an organ or, you know, getting yourself in, 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 a, in, in danger. Um, yes, the marketplaces, we go there. We tell the, uh, there's a name we call them. So when they are making their, their announcements of drugs and all that, there are other times when we go and we see that during our surveillance time, um, they are not registered products. We 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 take all of them and then bring them bring them to book. But as you can see, Ghanaians, when you go and do something, they say, "Hey, nasa nasa idrowe abuayeng di enti namu demu pesa mu se yejuma and then di enfa ingo siha." I believe if you are a citizen, can you go for the thing that you think it has been authorized and approved by the authority? Just as um, I, I, Dr. Dodoy mentioned, you know, the celebrities, I know they are backing, they are backlashing us and all that, but it is a good cause the Supreme Court ruled. And so if anything, just be on the safer side, be on your safeguard and go in for the best things. Those who are selling, we will de definitely apprehend them. But as I mentioned, education is key. Just try and communicate to your friends, your family members that they should entertain those kind of drugs. 
we will scoop them off their markets and they'll still come back. We will scoop them off the market and they'll still come back. But try as much as possible that you and your family will not engage in those people's um, ways. And then you'll be safe. And as you truncate or tr triple the message down, definitely people will not, add, they will not go in for their words. And then they, will, they, they themselves will then fold up and vanish and go wherever they wish they can go and make their sales. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I have still about 35 messages. Let me do some justice to some of them before we move on. Uh, Matthias uh, says, in fact, even pizzas are being infused with marijuana as some parties. Hmm. This social parties. Uh, Felicio, what is the channel name on YouTube, please? MHA, Mental Health Authority, please. Mary, iPhone, very, very educative discussion. Parents must shine their eyes. Going forward, great job. Thank you, Mary. Um, Feli, very educative program. Thank you, Feli. Joshua Kofi Atta, I'm not surprised about these drugs being abused. However, I am scared for the future of our youth. It's getting scarier by the day. That is true, Joshua. Uh, Dixon Kwesi Bresse, this is very educative and health informative. Thank you. Galaxy, I'm downhearted and sad. Hey, please, let's repeat such programs. Educative, God bless you all. Yes, we are still keeping on, Galaxy. Uh, Norbert, thank you very much to the organizers of this program. I've noticed that the number of people with health challenges in Ghana is increasing since treatment is very costly. Many people are left untreated. What is the government doing to help? What are individuals yeah. doing to help? Well, uh, no, but there is no government representative here and we are all individuals. So in our own small way, most important, getting the knowledge and helping yourself is the first precaution we have to take. Uh, for mental health authority, you are making sure that uh, people are treated as best as they can when you go into our facilities. At this moment, I can tell you that most of our health facilities have mental health units in there. Go and tell your story and there's help for you. If the problem is bigger than the health unit, they will create a referral for you and you'll be taken care of. Now, I did live from Palm. Great discussions. I'm learning a lot. Thank you now. Um, if we Hesse, what do you know about the cannabinoid system in the human body? This is a uh, Dr. Dadai, this one there is in your area, but I think you have run out of time for you to give us a lecture on this one. Maybe you have to save this one. Uh, Madam If Hesse, please forgive us. This is your question. I know it's a full thesis question. <laughs> ah, my goodness. Emmanuel Jesse Bona, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Please, how does one stop alcohol when one is willing? Seek for help. Seek for professional help. That is what I'll tell you. Seek for professional help. And they will help you. Today, Naomi Damte. Please, today is my first day and I'm joining everything. What is the YouTube name? Uh, Naomi, type in MHA, the word webinar, and add the figure one. When you add the figure one, all that we've done in the past, they will all pop up and you can enjoy all of them, including this one. Then you subscribe so that the moment you upload, you, you get a notification straight away. And finish, caffeine products in basic schools and their impact on intellectual development. Please, I need a brief on it, Mahmoud. Uh, I need a brief on it, Mahmoud. Ablekuma, not chef coordinator. Uh, Mahmoud, caffeine products in basic schools and their impact on intellectual development. Please, I need a brief on it. Mahmoud, you don't want to do research. We are research. There's a lot of it. Oh, Dr. Dada, I'm lying. There's a lot of research done on it. <laughs> There's a lot. So tap in your this thing to Google Scholar. Some will pop up. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, this is an eye-opener. I'm very insightful. Thank you. Uh, John, Paul, 
I learned a lot here. Doctor Dodo always advises on this. Yes, that is true. Uh, okay. So I think uh, uh, let me share. Let me share the slide. Um, let me share the slide about the rehab center so that you can take a photo in case you need it. Okay, so I've shared it. But my uh, my facilitators, your final words on the importance of seeking for help for drug abuse. Let me start with you, Julia. Hello. Yes. Great. Your, your, um, final, your final comments then tie in with seeking for help for drug abuse. Okay. Early, early, um, early help seeking. Early help seeking. I, I think I've mentioned this and I'll still mention it again. Um, guardians, parents should have a close eye on their children or their wards. I mean... It is from infancy that you can be able to nurture your child well if you want the, the, your child to become a, a good person or a, a, a healthy being. And so if you leave your child wayward without maybe scorning or you see him doing something wrong and you leave the person out, I mean, expect that then nobody can even tame the child, not even their teachers. So it's good to take rules, establish a very candid relationship with your wards, and then encourage them to have healthy living or healthy activities. Again, if you see your child in a mess now, I think professional help is the best solution. If you see it now, seek for a professional help. There are doctors, as doctor has mentioned, I think he has um, pointed out the locations and names of places you can even assess this professional help and will take us a, um, a better way of saving your child than maybe he being destroyed. Once again, on the side of the authority, our priority is to ensure that Ghanaians are safe with products and all that. Kindly pick whatever you pick up to buy, whatever you want to take in, ensure that it's FDA approved. If it is not, please do not take it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Bridget, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Your final words, uh, please. I would in like uh, I would like I would like to say that parents and families are the primary role models for children. And so to manage this, we should remain good models to our children because we, the children learn by observation. So what you do is what they learn and not what you see. So we must ensure that we are good models. And then we should also, like uh, Madam Julie said, we should make sure that we set boundaries, realistic boundaries for them and be open with these children, engage them, know what is going on in their lives, be a part of them. And please, because of our spiritualized everything, that is Oh, Madam Bridget, the network has taken you off. Hello, Bridget, can you hear me? Well, John, John, are you there, please? Yeah, I'm here. Your final words, please. Um, yes, this has been a very insightful um, seminar. I myself have picked up a few lessons, but my final words to parents would be that they should be vigilant. And also, even if you find your ward in drug abuse, you should still show love to them and still welcome them. Because if you try to use force or if you try to 
argue with them, it's going to push them further away. So once you find that your, your ward or your child is in drug abuse, kindly draw them closer. There is help. You can seek professional help from the, the mental health authority. And yes, they should be fine. Because I was there, I was once there, but here I am today, um, completely clean and sober. So it is possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Dr. Dodai. Dr. Dodai. The network has taken notes of, oh my goodness. Bridget, are you back on? Yes, please. I was on. Somebody just interfered with the call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just, just, so just quickly wrap up for us then. Okay, so I was saying that uh, substance use, one is never born with it. It's something that is acquired. It's a learned behavior. And therefore, we can unlearn it once somebody gets into it. But most important, importantly, this person keeps budging in my my, my program. <laughs> Hello, please, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. The, the person is frantic. They keep calling. <laughs> All right. So I was saying that know your child. Be a model for your child. Get help for your child and show them love as much as possible because it is something they have learned and you can help them to unlearn it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me see if Dr. Dodoy is back on. Dr. Dodoy, are you back on? Okay, he's not back on. Okay, so, I mean, my dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, uh, drugs and drug abuse, there is nothing good about it for our physical health, as well as our mental health. It all ends up in disaster. And for that matter, we as parents, we need to be on the lookout for the common signs that our children may exhibit when they begin to use drugs. It is important that Yes, it might be disappointing to see that. It might hurt to see that. And you may likely shun your ward. And when you shun your ward, the problem doesn't get better. It gets rather worse. So like John and Madam Bridget is saying, that is the time for us to show them love. We should bring them closer and seek for help for them. Because seeking for help for them will get them better. A good example is John, who almost marred in life, but now he's here with us, fresh and clean, and doing wonderful things. So if you seek for professional help for them, they will get better. We should not be angry with them, even though they get angry, they get irritable, they change, they change to our disappointment. But that is the time that we need to get bring them closer and get closer to them. That way we can help them to recover. On that note, I say a very big thank you to our facilitators, uh, John, Dr. Dodoy, Madam Bridget, and Madam Juliana. You've been wonderful. Mental Health Authority and our participants say a very big thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to come and facilitate this topic with us. We really appreciate your time, your knowledge, and all that you've done for us. And our wonderful participants, we also thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next month. Like I said, we are going to do a part two of the phone addiction. And this time, I want to hear more from you because the last time our facilitators gave us a lot of strategies. We want to know what worked and what did not work and new questions that you have for them. So it more or less, our participants will do the talking now. The flyer will come out quite soon so that you can put them in your calendar and we'll have a fantastic time. Uh, I wouldn't say first come, first said, though. We'll try and create other avenues so that uh, most people will join. But if you, want, if you want to be safe, come in early. Come in early. On that note, I would say thank you. I've been your regular host, Dr. Yao Aman uh, Have a very good day. Uh, we are not meeting this Friday. So uh, God gives us life. Enjoy the weekend as well. God willing, 
next month, July 26th, hopefully, we'll meet again and we'll discuss part two of the phone addiction, the strategies, what has worked and what didn't work. Those of you who have not taken the photo of the rehabilitation centers, please do. You never know when you need it. So take a photo of it, keep it in your archives. You never know when you may need to help someone. So thank you very much. It's been nice having you all around and have a blessed day. Thank you very much. The program has landed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye for thank now. You, Bye. Thank you. 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 everyone. Thank you, Doc. God bless yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.